Welcome to the first of a few videos on the new featured Artemis Minecraft education world. So I noticed this just popped up just the other day and I thought I would create a video to kind of show you what it is, talk about it a little bit, walk you through the world and help you have ideas of how you might incorporate this in your after school program, your summer camp, possibly even your classroom. So uh, when we get started into Minecraft education, right here under new and featured, um, I always love to look at this and just roll over it because there's a little bit of animation. And that also tells you when there's something new if, it, if it's different from the last time. So I'm gonna click on that. And then you can see that we have the Artemis rocket build and we have the return to the moon. So um, we're gonna start with the rocket build. And so notice, you'll notice that when we have these, you don't typically have a lesson plan that goes with it. So if you're experienced in using Minecraft education in your classroom, you might find that there's a lesson plan, there's lots of documentation. Typically in this section of the, the game, there isn't a lot there. So you, all you have is this description right here, which says blast off to the moon with this super stellar new Minecraft education map created in partnership with NASA. Meet rocket scientists and engineers as you venture through blocky labs, explore jet propulsion and design a moon rocket in Minecraft. Test your recreation with a fiery launch at Cape Canaveral. Join the Artemis generation and help begin a new era of space exploration. So, you know, space, especially the Artemis project is super exciting to everyone, especially kids. I, I like that we have kind of come into a new season of space exploration because for a while, I, ne I didn't hear students saying, oh, I wanna be an astronaut or I wanna be a rocket scientist or something like that. But now we're getting back into people wanting to be a part of it. And I think that's really awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and create the world. And this will take a few moments as it always says. And you know, depending upon whether you've been in the world or not will depend upon how fast it loads as well. Um, this is actually my first time in, so I'm kind of stepping into this with you. Um, you know, so you'll get my, my thoughts as my first time in and, you know, we'll, we'll talk about, wow, this is really cool. Or, you know, here's some ideas. Um, the thing I love about Minecraft education is the, the NPCs because they give us so much information. I mean, as I look around, oh, I see a lot of people watching me. I'm a little bit weird. That's okay. So welcome to Launch Control. This is where we make sure our rockets take off safely. We're working on a really exciting project called the Artemis Program, and we want you to be a part of it. Nice. We've made some special classes just for you, and we'll teach you everything you need to know about building rockets in the Artemis Program. And we have a special mission for you to practice your skills. Yeah. This will get you ready for when we start sending cargo and even people to the moon. The first mission you'll be working on is launching a satellite into space. The satellite will help us communicate with our spacecraft when we fly to the moon. You ever think about that? Do you ever think, and I, I mean, I love this already. It, it's made me think of something that, you know, when our astronauts, whether they're taking off from, from the US or whether they're taking off from Russia like we used to before SpaceX and the Dragon, you know, space space capsule and all that got us there. Do you ever think about the fact that at some point they're gonna be out of the range of communication? And so we have to have these satellites up in space to be able to send these signals so we can continue to, to be in communication. That's really important. Is an important step in our mission and you'll be playing a big role making it happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. What I love is there's no small role. I mean, whether you're sending a satellite for communication, whether you're helping, you know, with a program that does something in, in, the, in the actual rocket itself, it doesn't really matter whether you're the astronaut, every role is important to make it to where they're going, whether it's the International Space Station, the moon, someday Mars, everybody has a huge role. Without every role, it's not possible. All right, if you're ready to get started with the lessons, head down the hallway and through the first door, that's where the classroom is. 
Once you're there, just talk to the teacher and they'll get you started on learning all about why we're going to the moon. So go down the hall and I'm assuming since we're facing this person and you know, you know what they say about assuming that, that this is the right direction. Okay. I guess we could be going that direction, but typically we have it set up on purpose. Now I got this and I was absolutely wrong. I can't open that door. So I'm going to go down the hallway this way. I don't, oh, maybe that's the way this is all open. So typically if you're supposed to go that way, it's open and available. So let's see this first room. And I could just be walking around in, in no man's land. Oh yeah. Look, lesson one introduction. And I love that the NPCs have those, have those titles, um, their names. So we know where we're going. It says, welcome to the Artemis rocket build world. I'm here to tell you about the Artemis missions. NASA is going to land the first woman and person of color on the moon as part of these missions. They will use new technologies to explore more of the moon than ever before. I love that we're, we're not just sending white men, that we're sending um, women and people of color because we're all, you know, all capable. And it really shows the diversity of the U.S. and of this world. NASA will also work with other companies and countries to set up a permanent base on the moon. Ooh, um, other co countries, kind of like the International Space Station. Um, what we learned from our time on the moon will help us send astronauts to Mars for the first time. Why are we going back to the moon? Why is NASA sending people there again? Click below to find out. When you're done, move on to the next section to learn about how to build rockets. So I'm going to click on Discovery. And it says NASA is using what it has learned from exploring space for more than 50 years to explore the moon with Artemis. NASA will build a long-term presence at the moon and an outpost in orbit around the moon called Gateway. Interesting. Economy. The Artemis missions will help create new jobs and industries on the moon and help people learn new skills. Ooh. So did you ever think about that? That that's going to be someone's job. I mean, that's that's kind of a long, a long commute, isn't it? Um, to get to, to work, go to the moon. Um, and inspiration, we will explore more of the moon than ever before with the help of other companies and countries. And it's not just NASA. NASA is relying on other companies and other countries to help us get there. I think that this this collaboration is what makes us the most uh, powerful is when, when we can work together with our strengths to get places. We will also inspire people to learn more about space. We are the Artemis generation. Okay, so we read all those and we say done. You have completed my lesson. Go through the door and learn how a rocket works. So sometimes, sometimes we just go and we just, you know, read and learn. And so through the door, I'm going to pass this guy. That's not it. And I go through the door. Oh, and let's see if this is this dude's the right one. I'm going to stand on his desk. Hello, how does a rocket work? Before we start building our own rocket, let's talk about the basics. Engineers use special laws called Newton's laws to understand how forces work and make sure rockets fly properly. These laws were first written down by a scientist named Sir Isaac Newton a long time ago, but they're still very important for rocket engineers today. Absolutely. I mean, if we don't, if we don't know his laws, we're never going to get out of the Earth's atmosphere. Do you want to know more about Newton's laws and how they help build rockets? Let's find out. See first law. Oh, he's holding a number one. Um, the objects that like to stay still or keep moving unless something else makes them change. For example, if our rocket is standing still and we don't push it, it will stay still. But if we give it a push, it will keep moving until something else makes it stop. This is called Newton's first law of motion. It's important for us to understand this when we're building and flying rockets. Absolutely. Did you know how quickly an object speeds up or slows down or changes direction depends on how much mass it has and how hard it is pushed. This is called Newton's second law of motion. If we want to make a rocket go faster, we can either make it lighter or push it harder. Absolutely. And the third law, have you ever heard the saying, every action has an equal and opposite reaction? Well, this is a scientific idea called Newton's third law of motion. It means that when something pushes or pulls, on something else, the second thing pushes or pulls back just as hard. 
This is how we can make things move like rockets. A rocket engine produces thrust through action and reaction. Action, the engine produces hot exhaust gases which flow out of the back of the engine. Reaction, the force is produced in the opposite direction from the fuel pushing back on the rocket. Nice. When we're building and flying rockets, it is important to think about the different forces that will be acting upon it. These forces can push or pull the rocket in different directions and some forces are stronger than others. Ooh, I know what they're talking about. Look at this picture. Something's going to be keeping us down. For example, the force of gravity is always pulling the rocket down towards the ground, and the rocket's engines create the force called thrust that can make it push the rocket up into the sky. To make sure our rocket flies the way we want it to, we need to think about how all these forces affect it. So weight, weight is the force that the Earth's gravity creates on an object. Gravity causes a mass to have weight, and it's what makes things fall to the ground. The Earth is big and heavy, so it has a lot of gravity. That's why everything weighs something here on Earth. But did you know that weight can be different on different planets? That's because each planet has a different amount of mass, which is how heavy it is. Right, so that's why when our astronauts landed on the moon the first time, they had to have weighted boots. And when they walked, they kind of looked like they were doing this big skip or leap because they didn't weigh as much. So they had to have those weighted boots. And even still, they were able to jump a lot differently than on Earth. That would be so cool to feel that. The thrust, on the other hand, so let me screw up. Thrust is the force that makes a rocket move. It's created by the rocket's engines and pushes the rocket into a certain direction. Have you ever blown up a balloon and let it go? The air rushing out of the balloon creates a force that pushes the balloon in the opposite direction. It's kind of like that with a rocket. When the rocket engines burn fuel, it creates a force that pushes the rocket forward. This force is called thrust. So we have the weight and we have the thrust that really make a difference on, on how those laws affect the rocket. We want to build a rocket that can fly all the way to the moon. The moon is really far away, so we need to make sure our rocket goes fast enough to get us there. We also need to make sure that we have enough fuel to burn, to burn to power the rocket. Yeah, that would be horrible if we ran out of fuel and just got stuck because there's no, no rocket gas station up in space. That's because the rocket needs to go fast enough to escape the Earth's gravity. Gravity is the force that makes everything fall to the ground. To break free of the Earth's gravity, we need to go fast. Can you guess how fast we need to go? Oh, gosh. Um, I know how fast the International Space Station is going but I'm not going to guess. Um, I guess, well, if I did, were to guess, I would say like 20,000 miles an hour. Let's see what it says. After we learn more about how fast we need to go and how much fuel we need, we can start building a rocket to fly to the moon. So velocity. Velocity means the speed of something in a certain direction, delta V. This is the short way to refer to the change in velocity We'll start from zero and accelerate to six miles a second. That's 9.7 kilometers a second. I'm not even sure. Like, I'd have to do a lot of conversions for my 20,000 miles an hour, but that's pretty fast. To go six miles a second. So that's a lot. Anyway, going that fast, you could go from New York to San Francisco in just eight minutes. We'll be burning our rocket fuel to achieve our Delta V goal. You've completed my lesson, go through the door and learn rocket propulsion methods and fuels. Ooh. So, oh, I see marine biologists over there. That's kind of fun. Looking for the teacher in the front of the room. Here we go. Do you know about forces on our rocket velocity and Delta V? We have a, a lot of stuff to bring with us, so our rocket is going to be pretty heavy. That's true. Remember, not only do we need to bring our spaceship astronauts enough fuel to launch the rocket, we also have to bring enough fuel to get back. A rocket with more mass will speed up more slowly, so we're going to need a lot of fuel. Humans have been experimenting with rockets for thousands of years. Early propulsion engines were developed in Greece around 400 BCE. I did not know that. The first true rockets were created in China about 800 years ago. Ooh, did not know that either. Over the years, rockets have, been, have taken on many shapes. The fuel burned in these rockets can be liquid or solid. 
On Earth, many cars on the road are powered by engines that convert liquid fuel into energy to produce motion. You may be familiar with some forms of liquid fuel, such as gasoline, kerosene, di diesel, or alcohol. Our rocket will be partially powered by liquid hydrogen. With solid, solid fuel, you don't have to fill up the tank right before launch. A solid rocket can sit for years before firing. A solid rocket fuel is used in the Artemis rocket called P-Band. Polybutanine. Oh, gosh. I, I, I'm not even to try to say that. Uh, don't worry, we won't make you say that three times fast. Absolutely. Holy cow. Let's take a closer look at the parts of the Artemis Space Launch System. Starting with the sides, see, see here, you can see the sides there. Starting with the sides, we have the solid rocket boosters. The SLS has two solid rocket boosters that burn approximately six tons of solid fuel each second to help lift the enormous rocket off the launch pad and send it soaring to space. The jo their job is finished in just two minutes. So I don't know if, you, if you're old enough to remember the space shuttles. They had two solid booster rockets and then they had a big one. Actually, they had little ones. I don't think those were solids. I think the solid was the big one in the middle. I could be wrong because I haven't studied that. But they had multiple boosters. Inside the large central section called the core stage is a two liquid propellant tanks holding the liquid hydrogen fuel and liquid oxygen. At the base are four large RS-25 rocket engines. These engines together with the boosters accelerate the rocket to more than 17,000 miles per hour. Ooh, I was close during the first eight minutes of flight. So I said 20, and so I was, I was pretty close to how fast they would need to go. The top of the rocket is where the Orion spacecraft is located, so that's where they're gonna all be. The long nose of the rocket contains a launch abort system that can activate on a moment's notice to pull the Orion crew to safety in an emergency during launch. The rocket is huge, so you'll see, you'll see for yourself in a few minutes, but not all of it will make it to the moon. Once the core stage propellant is spent, the empty tanks are just unnecessary, unnecessary weight, so they drop off to make the rocket lighter. This is called staging. And if you've never seen that, you can watch that in, in an old space sh shuttle launch where they, they actually like drop off and the space shuttle that used to fall to the ocean, they'd have to go retrieve them. Once launched, the solid boosters do their job about two minute, in about two minutes and then fall away, splashing into the Atlantic Ocean. The core stage of the rocket using liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen fuel separates about six minutes later, splashing into the Pacific Ocean because they're, the Earth's rotating, they're going up, and they'd be over the Pacific Ocean at that time. At this point, all that's left is the upper stage of the rocket called the Interim Psychrogenic Propulsion Stage and the Orion spacecraft. About 50 minutes into the flight, the ICPS fires briefly to raise Orion's orbit. It fires again about 30 minutes later to push Orion out of the Earth's orbit and in a trajectory toward the moon and separates from Orion. At about two hours into the flight, the Orion spacecraft separates and continues the journey to the moon. You have completed my lesson. Go through the door and the next Artemis missions. Nice. Let's go there. We have learned a lot so far. Okay, what does she have to tell us? Artemis is planned to include several missions. Artemis 1 was successfully completed in December 2022 with the return of an uncrewed Orion spacecraft. This launch proved the technology and paves the way for the crew missions. Learn more about Artemis 2 and 3 below. So let's do that. Currently scheduled for 2024, Artemis 2 will carry a four-member crew of astronauts farther than any humans have been in a space. 4,600 miles beyond the far side of the moon. An eight to 10 day mission, it will include testing Orion systems that will enable the crew to live in space, demonstrating operations needed for future missions, orbiting the moon and collecting data before returning to Earth. The three, currently scheduled for 2025, Artemis three will be the first crewed moon landing since Apollo 17 in 1972. That's actually before I was born. So that's, it's exciting that in my lifetime, I'm gonna get to see people hitting, you know, landing on the moon and walking, walking the moon. Astronauts aboard Orion will dock with and transfer to the human landing system to visit the moon's South Pole region. 
The crew will remain in space for about a month before returning to Earth. Let's review the, some terms before you head into the Vehicle Assembly Building. Orion spacecraft, the, astronaut, the NASA spacecraft that will carry astronauts from Earth to the lunar orbit and back. Space Launch System Rocket, the only rocket that can send Orion astronauts and the cargo to the moon on a single mission. The SLS is the most powerful rocket that's ever been flown into space. So it's not just the one in the middle, but it's both sides. The Gateway, the space station orbiting the moon where astronauts will live, conduct science, and prepare for lunar surface missions on a regular Artemis missions. Gateway will orbit the moon for at least 15 years, supporting long-term science investigations and human discovery on and around the moon in, and in deep space. Human landing system, Starship human landing system provided by SpaceX. The human landing systems are the final mode of transportation that will take astronauts from the lunar orbit to the surface and back to orbit. So SpaceX is the one that has designed that, which is really cool. The Artemis Base Camp. The Artemis Base Camp is a concept that includes the elements astronauts will need to explore and conduct science on the moon. The base camp may be in one fixed location or distributed across a broader area of the lunar surface. It may include a modern surface habitat, a rover, a mobile home, a laboratory, power generator, and storage all the tools and equipment astronauts need to live and work on the moon. You have completed my lesson, so go through the door and head to the elevator to get started with the building of the rocket. So I'm going to go through the door here. I'm going to look for the elevator. Oh, there's the elevator. It opened up. It's telling me to click right there. With, so I, I right-clicked, and it's taking me down. Now, I think this is where we're going to pause for today. We've learned a lot. 